Welcome to the Old Time Radio Netcast Network. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Suspense. Original air dates April 20th, 1944, and the title is The Palmer Method. Roma Wines present Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Man in Black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you a star, Mr. Ed Gardner, better known to you, perhaps, as Archie, the proprietor of Duffy's Tavern, where the elite are wont to meet to eat. Mr. Gardner tonight makes his debut as a dramatic actor. He will not appear tonight as Archie but in a role entirely different from any he has ever played before. And so with a suspense play called The Palmer Method, and with the performance of Ed Gardner as a pen-pushing gentleman named Joe Palmer, we again hope to keep you in suspense. <laughs> then I will be back at 8 o'clock. Okay, that'll be okay. You will be waiting for me? Oh, don't worry, babe. I'll be here. <laughs> oh... Oh, will I be here? Dear friend Harry, I'm sitting here the last ten minutes knocking myself out laughing and wishing for somebody to tell it to. And then I get to thinking of you, so I'm going to write you the whole story. Harry, you got to admit that yours truly is one smart guy. Because in about an hour, they're going to bring me so much dough, they got to bring it in in a suitcase. No kidding. Of course, it's the Spanish moolah, but uh, even in the United States, it comes to about ten grand. But I better start from the beginning so you can get the whole play. And if you don't say that your old pal is one smart guy, I am a monkey's uncle. It, uh, it all begins about four months ago in New York when I'm on a lamb and... Expecting any minute that heavy hand is going to fall on my shoulders and I'm trying to think of something to do about it, you know. Happens I'm down to about three bucks, which makes the thinking a very tough proposition, even for a bright guy like me. Uh, anyways, uh, things being what they are, I naturally only go out at night. So one night I'm walking through the park in Union Square, still thinking and not getting very far. <laughs> in 46 states. Election extra, uh, paper, mister. Huh? Yeah, what a paper? Latest election returns. What election? Are you kidding? The election for president. Roosevelt and Landon. Here, get a paper and wise up. For a punk like you, I should go all excited every time they have an election? Well, it wouldn't strain your mind none. They only happen once every four years. Ah, don't be such a wise kid. Do you want a paper or don't you? Ah, sure. Give me one. Here, keep the change. Ah, gee, thanks. And uh, let that be a lesson to you, not to get wise with guys that might do you some good someday. Well, thanks anyway. Thanks, Reed. Now, what am I going to do with this thing? We are calling for volunteers to help the heroic Spanish people in their fight against fascism. If the fascism of Hitler and Mussolini is allowed to triumph in Spain, it will overrun all Europe. And once democracy is crushed in Europe, it won't be long before democracy is attacked here in the United States. Hitler himself has promised Hey, that. uh, and you there. The Speaking to me? Yeah, yeah. What's, uh, what's that guy all wound up about? He's asking for volunteers for the Spanish Loyalist Army. Oh, uh, who are they fighting? What's the matter? Don't you read the papers? I'm fighting a fascist revolt. Listen, I got a paper here. You think I'm illiterate? I just get kind of mixed up once in a while. Yeah, and they put out a lot of propaganda to confuse you. With Hitler and Mussolini on Franco's side, anybody can see what the score is now. Oh, sure, sure. Look at that. Anybody. Fascist bomb Madrid. I just wish sometimes I didn't have a wife and kids. I'd go over there and get me a couple of licks at those guys. Over to Spain, huh? Yeah. 
They, uh, they send you over there, uh, buy your ticket and all like that, don't they? Sure, they pay for your transportation. They raise quite a little money for that. Hmm, yeah. You don't happen to know where they, uh, sign up for this army, do you? Well, he'll sign you up right there. Hey, you want to go? Could be. Yeah, why not? Sure, why not? <laughs> You get to play, Harry? Not so dumb, huh? I not only lamb out of the country till I cool off, but I get a free ticket. It's what I always say, Harry. A guy with real brains can always get by. Of course, I know strictly from nothing about this war, but I naturally figure it's just one of them tango revolutions, you know, like you see in the movies with a couple of guys riding around shooting off their rods at nothing in particular, and pretty soon everybody goes home. But, uh... Sometimes I wish I had read more of the front pages of the papers a little more, but uh, when I get off the boat at Spain at a burg by the name of Barcelona, I find out this ain't such a funny war after all. This fascist mob is really knocking a joint around. There's shooting going on, and they're dropping bombs from airplanes, and the next thing you know, they got me in a uniform. Huh. So I'm standing there in the railroad station with a bunch of other guys, a whole mob of us, you know. It looked like the $2 window at Belmont. It seems that we're going away somewhere, honey. Next. Hey, step up here, please. Next. Your name, please? Uh, Padway. George Padway. Padway. Your number 336, car 7, compartment 3. Next, please. Uh, Palmer. Uh, Joe Palmer. How did you spell it, please? Uh, P-A-L-M-E-R. Like the Palmer method. Oh, just Palmer. George 337, car 7, compartment 3, with Padway. Next, please. Step up, please. Hey, uh, you, uh, bad way. Someone calling me? Yeah, come here. Uh, look, uh, my name is Joe Palmer. We're supposed to ride in the same compartment or something? Oh, splendid. That's uh, car seven. It's down this way, I imagine. Well, I'm glad you know. I can't make head and a tail out of these dinky rat lessons. <laughs> of course. You're uh, American, aren't you? What else? Here, uh, let me give you a hand with your gear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Hey, uh... These guys over here take this war pretty serious, don't they? Well, rather. What did you expect? Yeah, yeah. See, from what I see around this Barcelona, it looks to me like, uh, if they ain't careful, uh, somebody's apt to liable to get killed here. Well, if you think this is bad, what about Madrid? They're dying up there by the thousands. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Madrid? Ain't that where this train is going? Well, of course. They're sending us up to keep them out of University City, if we can. And you say they're knocking them off up there by the thousands? I'm afraid so. Hmm. That ain't good. Yeah. You're not worried, are you, old man? Well, uh, no, no, but I, I, I'm, I'm just thinking that... Uh, the... Papers, please. Padway, 336. Uh, no, and no, I'm... Palmer, 337. No, 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 I'm... All in order. Hey, wait a minute, you got us mixed up. <laughs> well, how do you like that? <laughs> you seem to have got us mixed up, what? Yeah, yeah. That, that would be funny, wouldn't it, if they got us mixed up, you, Padway, and me... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be funny, all right. That would be very funny. Tonight for Suspense, Roma Wines bring you as star radio's famous Archie, Ed Gardner, whom you've heard in the prologue to The Palmer Method by Ernest Martin and Robert L. Richards. Tonight's adventure in Suspense. In this brief intermission in the play, let us journey in fancy to Havana and sit at a table in the gay restaurant Paris. At the next table, we see a farewell party given for an American visitor. The American is wondering how he'll be able to repay in his own country the hospitality shown him in Cuba. Reassuringly, his Cuban host remarks, Es muy fácil, amigo. Just be sure to serve wonderful Roma wine. It is wine imported by us from your own country. Roma wine. Indeed, Americans can well be proud that judges of fine wines in so many lands now acclaim the wines of California among the world's most enjoyable of all time. Of these truly superb wines, Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. If you aren't already one of the millions enjoying Roma wines regularly as a delicious beverage any time, to add sparkle to any meal, to smarten your entertaining, make your own taste test to choose your favorite. Choosing from Roma Wines, many different wine types. When you learn their modest cost here in America, with no import duty to pay, no expensive shipping charges to absorb, you'll know why we say Roma Wines 
are for your daily enjoyment. I'll spell out the name for you. R-O-M-A. Roma Wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now let us return to Joe Palmer as he sits in a hotel room in Spain writing a letter. Ed Gardner is our star in The Palmer Method, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Well, Harry, there I was, on a train heading straight for Madrid, where they're knocking guys off every five minutes, which is naturally a little upsetting to a sensitive person like myself. And, uh, anyways, I get to thinking about this Padway guy I'm riding with. I can see there's something different about him from the rest of these guys, so I get to thinking about a plan. I say, what in the world are you doing there? You've been working away at it the last half an hour. I'm um, just practicing. Practicing what? The Palmer Method. What in heaven's name is the Palmer Method? You never heard of the Palmer Method? Uh-huh. It's penmanship. You know, the way they learn you to write when you're a kid. Some guy named Palmer invented it. You see, you make these ovals and lines. And pretty soon it learns you how to use your whole arm. See? Makes you write and very pretty. Aren't you a little old for that sort of thing? Well, it depends on how you look at it. With me, it's a business. You're an instructor in penmanship? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it. Instructor in penmanship. What's so funny? Well, look, when, when I was a punk kid in PS4, you know, the only subject I can pass is penmanship. I'm a whiz at it, you know, so naturally, my name being Palmer and all, it's kind of a standing joke in a school, you know, the kids would holler, Joe Palmer, he flunks in everything but writing. That's the Palmer method. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's how it started, but uh, now I still like to keep in practice because, uh, well, like I say... By this time, with me, it's a business. But I, I still don't quite see how it can be much of a business. You ask a lot of questions, don't you? Well, I'm terribly sorry, old man. I don't mean to pry, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. What about you? Me? Yeah. How about me asking you a couple of questions? Why, of course, anything you like. You're English, eh? That's right. Yeah, I could tell that right away. Really? Yeah, I could also tell that you're not exactly a stumble bum. I uh, bet your old man is in the chips, huh? You mean uh, wealthy? Matter of fact, he is, rather. Hmm, maybe uh, even a lord or something? Oh, no, nothing like that, really. Lesser nobility, you know. Hmm, I thought so. Big shot, huh? You ever been to this Madrid before? No, never have. You know anybody there? Not a soul, as a matter of fact. Hmm. At it again, I see. I, I say, you know, you know, you never did tell me about that Palmer business. You mean, how come it's a business with me? Mm-hmm. I write checks. Write checks? Yeah, with other people's names on them. I might add that I'm about the top man in the profession, too. Oh, you're a... a... Yeah, I guess they call it the same thing in England, don't they? Forgery? Oh, sure, I told him, so what? He don't know anybody in this Madrid, and I figure he ain't gonna know uh, much about me, and he ain't gonna say much anyhow. Although I still don't know quite how I'm gonna do it. But then I get one of them breaks, Harry, that even a smart guy needs sometimes. By this time, it's night, and we're rattling along with the lights out, blacking on the inside of a nickel cigar, and I wait to see if maybe Padway will go to sleep or something. Well, the next thing I know, I must have dozed off myself. As I hear a noise, and as I look out, I see it's daylight already, and we're coming to a big burg. Uh, Padway's awake, too, and he's looking over at me. You... You dropped something, Palmer? No, I thought you did. No. Well, oh, hello. We must be getting into Madrid. Madrid, huh? Mm, sure enough. Pulling into the station now. Oh, that's great. That's fine. I say, old boy, you look a bit peaked. Mm. Anything wrong? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm fine. Hey, what was that? A bomb, most likely. A bomb? Yeah. That's it, all right. They're, they're bombing the city, I suppose. Yeah, hey, 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 they, they ain't gonna bomb us, are they? Hey, Joe, I think they are. What, what do we do, Pat? What, what, what do we do now? Do. Keep down on the floor and hope for the best. <clears throat> the best better be awful good. This is a bit ironic, I must oh. say. Oh, watch out for this one. Oh. George. Padway. Padway! Honest, Harry. 
What happens to that train should happen to Sing Sing Prison. I look around and there's Padway over by the door, out like a light. And I can see that he ain't long for this world, the poor guy. Me, I'm lucky I don't have a scratch. So naturally, now is when I go to work. I go through his pockets and take out his papers. There's a passport, some letters, and a wallet with quite a bit of dough in it. So I take a couple of things out of my own pocket and I put them in his. Only just then, Padway starts coming out of it. Well, Harry, what would you do if you were me? Like I say, I am opposed to violence as much as anybody. But there he is looking at me. And the guy ain't gonna live long anyway. So I grab me rifle and... I tap him on the noggin. Sure enough, he's gone again. But for good this time. And none too soon, because there's some guys coming down to the rescue. One of the guys pokes his head in the door. Uh, come again? Uh, you all right in here? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. What happened? Don't you know? You're lucky to be alive. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. But uh, this guy here, he, he wasn't so lucky. Huh? Oh. Dead or right? You know him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I forget what name he told me. He's, he's got his papers on him, I think. Oh, let me see here. Oh, yes. Joseph Aloysius Palmer. Oh, yeah, that was it. Palmer, yeah, yeah. Poor fellow. Why, he died in a good cause. Hmm, you're right there, brother. He certainly died in a good cause. <laughs> Get it, Harry? Joe Palmer, who was wanted by the New York cops, is dead. And George Padway, the big shot Englishman, is me. So I duck out quick to a hotel, I get me a change of clothes, and I figure maybe I better take a look through the rest of Padway's stuff to see if maybe I can get an angle. Well, I find this letter on him from some guy named E. Valenkos. This letter says Valenkos looks forward to meeting Padway and names a time and a place. Now, anybody else, Harry, this letter might have threw for quite a loss, but not yours truly, because I know that Valenkos has never seen Padway. The letter practically says that, and Padway himself has told me he don't know nobody in Madrid. You catch on? And I figure this Valenkos is probably just the guy to get me out of this army. So uh, what do I do? I simply take me pen in hand and I write a letter, very nice and neat, in George Padway's handwriting. Dear Valenkos, I says, I will likewise look forward to meeting you at the time and place you say. Signed, George Padway. So, the next night I go to keep the date. No fooling, Harry. This Madrid is really in tough shape since this fascist mob has been giving it the business. People is all poor and hungry, especially the women and kids, so... Naturally, I feel sorry for them as I brush them off and walk into this hot spot. Well... I take a corner table and I tell the waiter I'm expecting a Mr. Valenkos. So I'm sitting there practicing with me uh, pencil and paper, making me lines and circles, and the next thing you know, I ain't alone. Hello? Oh. Hello, Toots. What's cooking? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, just practicing. Ah. What is it? A secret code? Yeah, yeah, that's right. The, the Palmer code. I like it. It's pretty. Yeah. You ain't so unpretty yourself, babe. Uh, only I got some business tonight. Oh. Uh, aren't you going to ask me to have a drink? Uh, yeah, yeah, but, uh... Look, uh, how about getting out of here and going someplace else for it, though, huh? <laughs> what about your business? Uh, well, with a babe like you around, I'm afraid the business will have to wait a little. Well, where shall we go? How about, uh... About going up to my hotel room. You mean room 359? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. How did you know? What is your name, senor? George Padway. So what? You are well known, senor. Oh, sure, but... Uh... My name is Elena. That's fine, Elena, but uh, now about... Uh... My last name is Villancos. Villancos? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. <laughs> oh, no. I do not think so. <laughs> so you're the Valancos I'm supposed to meet here. Well, in that case, Elena, just call me jo uh, George. Of course, George. But now, George, I think perhaps we had better go to that hotel room of yours after all, eh? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. It'd be a good idea. But 
Only for business, George. Of course, naturally. But there is one thing I cannot wait to do. What's that? Congratulate you. Oh, thanks. For what? Why, for that troop train job, of course. Oh, well, it's... it wasn't nothing, really. But there is still uh, something I do not understand. What's that, baby? How did you manage to blow it up while you yourself were on it? Uh, 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 well, uh, look, uh, uh, let's go up to the room. We'll talk it all over, huh? George, you still have not told me how you blew up the train and did not get killed yourself. Well, do I have to tell you everything? Oh, perhaps that is why you are so successful, eh? You have your little secrets. Hmm, trade secrets are secrets in every trade, you know. But of course I forget. You got your training with the Gestapo in Berlin. They, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they taught me a couple of things. Uh, tell me, were you in contact with the firm of Krupp when you were in Berlin? Well, I saw something of them naturally. And what about Deutsch's farming industry? Uh, very fine firm, uh. I guess there's a lot of dough on our side, huh? Oh, but of course, we have the money. The others, uh, the scum. They have the rags on their backs and the fewer rifles they get from the Bolsheviks. Hmm. Yeah, sure, but uh, about this money. Yes, George? You see, uh, the fact is I'm, uh, I'm a little short myself. Well, we always have more work for you to do. Oh, sure, but uh, first, don't you think that... Uh... Ah, so that is why you are so suspicious with me. You want first the money. Well, that's the usual way, ain't it? But of course, I can arrange that. How much do you want? Well, how much do you figure this job is worth? Well, perhaps as much as 50,000 pesetas. Uh, how much is that in United States dollars? I mean, pounds. About a thousand pounds? Thousand. I don't think I can do it for that kind of dough. A thousand pounds is a lot of money, George. Yeah, but think of the expenses. What expenses? Well, things like, uh, well, uh, this dynamite, for instance. You know, you don't get that stuff for peanuts. Oh, 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 George, you are teasing me. I will get you all the dynamite you want for nothing. Hmm, well, uh, how about the element of personal risk? This racket ain't exactly the healthiest in the world, neither, you know. There you are right, George. It is a risky profession to be a fascist saboteur. That's what I'm telling you. How much do you want? Well, I don't see how I can play ball for less than 100,000 of them, uh, pesetas. Very well, we will pay it. Well, well, that's swell of you, toots. Uh, how soon can I have the dough? I will have it here within an hour. Okay, it's a deal. And then uh, maybe you and me will still have time to go out on a little bender, huh? <laughs> yes, perhaps we will. Yeah, and uh, look, make it small bills, will you? They're easier to handle. It's a lot of money, but uh, my friends and I will bring it in a suitcase. Swell. And uh, one thing, Alina, be, uh, for this next job, you uh, you might have to help me get out of the country for a little while. You know, I got certain arrangements that I got to make. There will be no trouble there, I can assure you. Well, that's a real pal, Alina. I won't forget it, neither. I know you won't, George. Oh, George, there is one thing. Just a little formality so I can be sure to get the money. Oh, sure, babe. Anything you say. Will you write a little note for me? So they will know I contacted you, you see. A note? Uh, what uh, What does the note say? Oh, just something like, uh, I, Padre, have contacted Elena Bijankos, and we are agreed on future procedure. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that'll be all right. Okay. Uh, I have contacted Elena Bijankos. <laughs> And we are agreed on future procedure. Sign, George Padway. Hey, huh? Okay. Thank you, George. Well, I think you better run along now, huh? <laughs> then I will be back at 8 o'clock. Okay, that'll be okay. You will be waiting for me? Don't worry, babe. I'll be here. Oh, <laughs> brother, <laughs> will I be here? <laughs> So now, Harry, you can see why I'm uh, practically killing myself laughing while I'm writing this letter. 
Of course, while I'm writing that note in Padre's uh, handwriting, I can hardly keep my face straight. You know, it's so right up me alley. Only thing that worries me a little is me conscience, if you can call that what I got a conscience on account of it. really makes me sore the way this fascist mob I'm hooked up with is kicking the rest of the people around. However, I'm in up to me ears now, too, so I got to think about yours truly first, right? But maybe when I get in a clear someday, I'll figure out a way to get a crack at these guys myself. And I kind of believe me, Harry. These fascists is really a bunch of no-good crumbs. And I guess that'll even have to go for Alina. But now the hour's about up, and I think I hear somebody coming down the hall now. I'll tell you the payoff on all this when I see you in little old New York. In the meantime, Harry, keep your shirt on and try not to die from envy of your old friend Joe Palmer. <laughs> Okay, babe, I'm coming. Well, right on time, huh? Yes. Senor Padre, this is Senor Martinez, Senor Quintero. Oh, hi, fellas. Got the old suitcase, huh? Uh, have any trouble getting the dough? No, no trouble. Well, maybe we'd better open it up and count it, huh? Yeah, you know, just in case. Yes, I think we should. Go on, open it. Yes, Senor. Uh, you know, Elena, I never would have... Hey, what's that Tommy gun doing in there? Where's the dough? What's the matter? Are you afraid, my fascist friend? Fascist? Wait, wait a minute, what about you? Ain't you? Ah, uh, not quite. I am an agent of the Republic of Spain, Senor Padre. We have been waiting a long time to trap you, my friend. But now, we bring you your reward. Alina, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell that guy to put that gun away. You, you gotta let me explain. I, I ain't no fascist. My name ain't even Padway. My name is Joe Palmer. I'm, I'm an American guy. I just come over here to fight for your side. No, no kidding. You can, you can find it out from your friends in New York. I'm, I'm the guy that even killed Padway. Who wrote the letter to me? Who wrote the note for me tonight in the handwriting that we even compared with all our other correspondence with Padway just to make us sure? Well, I did sure, but, but that's me racket. Handwriting forgery. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm Joe Palmer. Can you prove it? Sure, I can. Mm. Yeah. I guess maybe I can't, huh? The handwriting. Yeah. Yes, like I said to Padway, I'm the best in the business. It's kind of funny now, ain't it? We're wasting time. Okay. Guess there's no use talking. Guess I've been a heel. I outsmarted myself. But I want you to know one thing. I was I was really kind of on a level in my own way toward the end, but... Oh, what's the difference? Just one thing I want you to know. For your own information, I, I'm, I'm, I'm swearing it. The, the guy you're bumping off is Joe Palmer of the International Big Raid. Palmer. Like the... Like oh, the and Palmer. Martinez. Palmer. A smart agent. One must say that for him. Yes. He was very, very smart. And so closes The Palmer Method, starring Ed Gardner. Tonight's tale of... Suspense. Before Mr. Gardner returns to our microphone, let me give you a suggestion that you will find can add to the success of your next dinner party at home. At one end of the dining table, place a bottle of Roma Wine's hearty, full-bodied Burgundy. At the other table end, place a bottle of Roma Wine's delicately delicious Sauterne. And then, let each of your guests select the Roma Wine to his liking you will know that whatever the individual choice of a guest, both of these Roma California wines will delight by their superb quality. The quality that has made Roma wines America's largest selling wines. In Roma, you have the old world art of winemaking, plus the extra care, constant tasting and testing, which modern knowledge adds. While the superb quality of these good Roma wines will win your full accord with the judgment of wine experts of many lands, that... Roma wines are truly magnificent. Let me repeat the name. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Well, uh, this is Ed Garner, Elias Sarchi, speaking again. It's been a great pleasure to be on Suspense, and account it's one of my favorite shows. And uh, Next week, uh, uh, I hope you'll all be listening into uh, the show like the gang of Duffy's all will be when the star will be Gene Kelly. Thank you. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Don't forget there next Thursday for Gene Kelly in... Suspense. Suspense.
Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this presentation from the Old Time Netcast Network. For more great shows, go to otnetcast.com. Don't forget to like and rate this episode in your favorite podcatching client. Follow this show on Facebook by going to otnetcast.com forward slash Facebook. This episode is covered under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otnetcast.com forward slash copyright. Thanks again for listening, and I hope you have a great day.